still on upside down. The hashtag is upside down, and the WhatsApp number is 0550 Let's hear from you. And this show is probably brought to us by Vodafone. The future is exciting. Ready? Yeah, indeed, ready. And today hmm. we have a an interesting guest. Um, I think once we are drawing closer to the political season, the election period, we need to spice it up and turn things upside down a little bit. So we have a guest who is going to give us a more political view. Of course, I mean, <laughs> once you know your constituencies mm -hmm. and you know um, your presidential candidate, it's also very, very important yeah. that you know um, the candidate, I mean, who will likely be your member of parliament, yes. your rep, you know, mm -hmm. in the house. And it is very important that beyond you knowing them politically, yes. you should also know the other side. You know? That's right. Now, this man that we are going to be talking to... Um, has it all, you know, yeah. he's been in the house for quite some time now, he's also been a journalist, and one thing that I really love, and mm -hmm. I'm sure that many people love that about and him, I also love, it, is, is the, the richness, you know, yeah. of this language, exactly. very, very ornamental, he does yeah. not complete one statement without a proverb, a proverb. and he's <laughs> going to be telling us how come he knows so much proverbs. A man who has died in the market, you don't need to announce his funeral. <laughs> Credibility matters a lot, my brother. We all know the truth we have unpeddled, and we have said it, that if a lion is found of patronizing the marketplace, they will treat it like a puppy. <laughs> Today, if Dr. Bawunye should greet anybody, he meets you and greets you good morning, you look at the position of the sun before you respond. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yep. our guest today is the Member of Parliament for Nar Sanarigu, the Honorable yes. A.B.A. Kuseni, make some noise! Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. You're welcome. Honorable, you're welcome. thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. How I wish um, I could start off with a proverb. I, I think it's, but I'm, I think I'm it's very right. limited, you know. Oh, oh, maybe he can start. Oh, and well, then we'll he, pick he, up. he can always. They say that don't dance yourself lame before the real dance. Nice one. <laughs> I'm sure, uh, the drum beat is yet to come. Yes, mm. yes, so yes. I'm sure that uh, as we go along, mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. the one who roasts meat will not have a dry mouth. Ah, Absolutely ah, not. Ah, so I love that. I'm sure it will come. Honorable, we, we just love you, Ahmed. Yeah. You are different and everybody knows you by your proverbs but who is aba fuseini i mean we know the alhassan bashir um fuseini but that other a yes what is, is it yes the a is also alhassan oh. after my grandfather okay. so your name after my grandfather alhassan okay so your name is alhassan bashir, bashir alhassan fuseini, fuseini. Yes. Wow. Wow. You a big <laughs> man. Yeah. so so take us to your childhood where were you born? Who are your parents? Do you have any other siblings? Yes, I, I was actually born in Tamale, Tishugus to be specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. Within the Tamale uh, metropolis mm -hmm. on 2nd February 1956. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're one year older than Ghana? Certainly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so I was uh, a bona fide citizen at uh, 1957 when Ghana mm. came into being. Yeah. And uh, so, like, it is being said, uh, you don't show an indigenous the way to his house. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, from there, I attended uh, the Tishigu Anglican Primary School, 1962-63 academic year. Okay. And then uh, from there, went to Kalpohe Middle. Mm -hmm. From Kalpohe Middle to... And those days, we, you can only go to secondary school to the common entrance examination. Mm. So I took the common entrance examination when I was in middle school from three. I was almost at the terminal end of my middle school okay. education. Okay. And I went to Yendi Secondary School. Mm. I mean, Yendi. Mm -hmm. And then from there to T.I. Media Secondary School, 1978 to 1980. In Kumasi? Yes, T.I. Media. Okay. So I'm a product of uh, the Amas okay. fraternity. Okay. Okay. Mm. Uh, they say in Amas, we say that when they are counting hot things, they remove fire first. <laughs> so um, from T.I. Media to the University of Ghana, Legon, wow. where I did political science. Okay. Um, then I, after on completion of my national mm. service, I was first posted to the Ministry of Information, mm. and then later on to Ghanaian Times, okay. and that's where I started my journalism career. Wow. Okay. Wow. Uh, as a matter of fact, on campus, we used to do some bit of media practice. I've always uh, uh, had about a keen uh, interest in, in becoming a journalist. Mm. So okay. even while uh, on campus. We used to do our whole magazines and others, okay. yeah. and I was yeah. uh, very active in that. Mm. So when I was posted to Ghanaian Times, uh, it gave me the opportunity mm. to practice my mm. the little that I learned. And mm. I can see without any idea of a station that uh, Ghanaian Times has been very crucial 
in, 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 in doing me with the requisite yeah. skills yeah. to become a journalist. So I was there, completed my service, I stayed over for a, mm. about roughly one year. Mm -hmm. And then I was employed by Daily Graphic. Mm. So I went first, I was uh, assigned to a mirror where I, I wrote the column on foreign affairs. Okay. So those who used to read foreign affairs mm -hmm. and uh, uh, on a weekly basis cherish that column very much. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, I was there until I was appointed the first political editor of the Daily Graphic. Okay, in so, 1995. so let, let's go back to yeah. your days on Legon campus yes. because since that is where you really started, you know, media. I mean, oh, yeah. your media yeah. stuff and all. How, how, what was exactly was the magazine on just on your halls and sc the school? Yeah, it was basically about hall affairs. Okay. You know, in those days, you used what, to do publications. Hall were you? I was on Legon Hall. Okay. okay. I thought we were in Commonwealth. Uh, <laughs> the Commonwealth were our vassals. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, in any case, I was an associate vendor. Were you charging <laughs> with them? Were you doing all those kind of things with oh, them? Legon, we were the main charges. Okay. And I, I can tell you without that that it was like a, a, a hobby. Mm. You had to do it as a matter of fashion to be recognized in those mm -hmm. days. Yeah. And so maybe for those of us who were vertically challenged, that was a way in which you could <laughs> bring up your, your, yeah. your, your, your stature. So how mm. popular were you on campus? Uh, actually, I played football. Mm. I was... I was uh, when, 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 I was in the uh, middle school and mm. secondary school. I was a very good footballer. Mm. Okay. I used to play uh, on the left wing. And uh, I can tell you that I had a lot of dribbling skills. Mm. Uh, so so which, which football club do you support in Ghana? Oh, Accra has a folk. Okay. okay. And, yes. and international fact, there are two teams in Ghana, Accra has a folk and the rest. <laughs> oh, see, you know, there's Kotoko and the rest. <laughs> and international teams? Uh, Barcelona. Wow. Oh, okay. I like Barcelona. Yeah, All right. Yeah. Interesting. You know, yeah. when when you were growing up, I mean, I, I just want to know, at which point or which moment do you keenly remember that you knew that at this point, like, I'm going to be a media person? They say that the calf that will grow to become the head of the, uh, to become the leader in the uh, head, mm -hmm. is spotted from the day it is born. Mm. Okay. Uh, from my young pioneer days, and let me say this, uh, that is what we've lost improperly grooming and conscientizing our youth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Usaitin Fu, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, the founder of this nation, mm -hmm. put in place a young pioneer movement, I'm sure you must yeah. have heard it, yeah. where at very early ages, when you go to primary school from class one, class two onwards, you are enrolled into mm -hmm. that, and they, you are begin, you are, you are, they begin the conscientization process of letting you feel mm -hmm. like you must work for the supreme interests yeah. and aspirations of your country, country and your people, to imbue the spirit of patriotism in, in, mm -hmm. in the youth. Mm. So that at that early age, they inculcate those values mm -hmm. and they grow mm. to become useful citizens of Ghana. Mm. So in those days, you know, they will train you to write and uh, they can ask you, okay, write a piece on this one. And then you write mm. something. Yeah. So that is where I, I developed the, mm. the, the, interest. The, the interest in the skill of how to write. And especially mm. like it was not just composition, but they can give you an animal, describe this animal. And, mm. and, and, and you do it and present it to your teachers. So, how, how and so that's why I yeah. had that... Uh, uh, initial uh, mm. stint with a uh, so so how, how different part. is that um from what you see today i mean you you hear of campus life and all that when you were in legon and um today what has changed uh i think many things have changed mm. um the very atmosphere when we were in legon of course the numbers were not as big as you have to yes mm. how many people were sleeping in one room we were, we were two in a room even eventually so the person moved to another room which was vacant so i was virtually in a room alone wow, wow. and so you can see uh, the, the and that is why a lot of us feel that those of us who have the burden of leadership today yeah mm. must endeavor to leave a better legacy for the upcoming generation tomorrow yeah right otherwise we had the benefit of uh, studying in environments that were very conducive to studies. Mm. And today, mm. even some, how to even lay your head is a problem. Yeah. And I know uh, a lot of parents are, have had to cough up 7,000. Mm. I just heard that the Lego, for instance, mm. is charging 7,000, 8,000, 12,000 mm. and above. I mean, I mean it's it, quite it, expensive. It undermines today. the spirit of equal opportunities for all citizens of this land. Mm. And I think that uh, uh, those of us who have the benefit of uh, being entrusted with power yeah. to stay on, the, on behalf of our people must do better mm. to create a more congenial yeah. atmosphere, to create a better Ghana yeah. for the generations that are yet unborn. Yeah. Honorable, you, I mean, you just mentioned about the parents. I, I, I just want to take you back a bit. I mean, your parents, uh, yes. both mom and dad, what were they into and how was the upbringing for you? 
let me say this. Uh, my mother, my father was, uh, was, my father is late. I think mm. two years ago he passed on. Mm. Oh. He was the, he was a chief. Mm. The, uh, is the Duhana of the Bambiao area. There's a, a, a chieftaincy title in the Bambiao area in Tishu. Mm. Uh, and that is where my father was chief. Mm. And his father and his grandfather, his great, great, great grandfather before had been chief. So yeah. It got to my turn. Uh, my father was blessed with, by the Almighty Allah to have lived on over 100 years. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, but my mother is still alive. Okay. Uh, my mother is very old. Mm. Uh, she's in San Nargu. She was a petty trader. And uh, I can say without any out of a station that if I'm asked who is my best friend, I say it's my mother. Wow. Mm. Yeah. How come? Um, I, cannot, I cannot repay my mother mm. for what she's done for me. Mm. But for her, I know that it's almighty Allah who creates people and your destiny is there. But I can see without any item of hesitation that, but for my mother, you I may be not here. have been where I am. Mm. Wow. Because even in those days, it was not uh, popular and widespread mm. to get children to go to school. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And uh, indeed, when uh, my senior brother, uh, we are four, we're four in the family, but not mm -hmm. three. Uh, my senior brother happened to live with my father's senior brother. So okay. I was the only son in the, my, in the house with my mm. father and my mother. Okay. So when it was time to go to farm, my father said, no, I, I have to follow him and go to farm. Mm -hmm. So for the first year, when my colleagues, uh, my counterparts and age mates were going to school, I, I was going to farm mm. with my old man. So in the second year, my mother said, oh, it is, I think it is important to also let our son go to school. Yeah. Mm. And uh, he had a disagreement with my old man. The wow. old man thought I should go to farm. My mother taught I should go mm. to school. So there was a bit of a small Tension argument. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in, our, in those days, especially, uh, uh, in our area, it is patrilineal. And not only that, but the, 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 the males take precedence over the, 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 the females. Mm. Men have a better say and much more important say than women. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so in those days, it was uh, women who had to listen to their dad. But I'm sure my mother used her persuasive skills yeah. to persuade my old man. No wonder her son is a politician today. <laughs> Eventually, um, yeah. uh, he allowed me to go. But yeah. the full burden of my education was born by my mother. Mm. Wow. Fortunately, she was a petty trader. She traded in cloths, jewels. She mm. did sell some few things. Yeah. So how, how many to... wives did your father have? Uh, at one time, one. Wow. Yeah, it was only when um, there was a separation between my father and my mother. Okay. Not that they, 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 they were no longer there, but there was a separation. And mm. my father took on another wife. Wow. Yeah, but That's I very impressive, you know. Yeah. Yes. A chief one, and yeah. Yeah. He, is a, he was a Muslim. Yes. And one wife. Yes. Very impressive. I'm, I'm sure that uh, it looks like it's out of the normal. <laughs> it looks like. <laughs> yeah, exactly so. Um, yeah. Uh, so I, I, I can say without any hesitation that my mother... Um, it's, it's, a, it's a pivotal part of my life. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, like I said, I cannot repay her yeah. for all that she's done for me. Absolutely. Yeah. And, God uh, bless her. Maybe that's why yeah. she's lived on so yeah. long. By the grace of Allah, she's still alive. Yeah. And uh, Allah Almighty says that the one who pays his dues mm. will get the recognition. Amen. So I have no doubt in my mind that uh, my, my mother has done her part for me. Mm. And uh, when I took my first salary, mm. I went and gave it to her. Mm. Wow. She looked at it and there were tears in her eyes. I said, no, go and give it to your father. And I said to her, mom, you deserve it. He said, mm. yes, but go and give it to your father first. Mm -hmm. And then you, you gave so it to your dad? So I went to give it to my father. My father took it. I said, no, have you given it to your mother? Go mm. and give it to your mother. Mm. Mm. So it really touched me. Yeah. Wow, wow. Yeah, I, I, I pray that your, your kids do it for you as well. <laughs> By the grace of Allah Almighty. Yes, so yes. on Legon campus, you studied political science and what? I majored in political science with geography. Mm. You never did English? No, I didn't do English. So wow. where is all this your skills with the language coming from? Uh, it's Almighty Allah. It's a gift of Allah. Mm. Wow. You know, the seed planted by the Almighty Allah cannot be destroyed by the most devastating drought. Mm. It's Allah's mm. gift. And the... Uh, um, it's his providence. Mm. Let's, let's, let's just put it at that. But um, a lot of it comes from sitting and listening to the older people. Okay. Mm. When you have time, just spend about some 10, 15, 20 minutes. Mm. You can drink from their deep-seated fountain of wisdom. 
Yeah. We'll, we'll be coming pipe. to that, the yeah. things that we have to learn. But he also did radio, and um, you hosted, uh, co-hosted Alaj and Alaj with Alaj Baturi. Yeah, sure. And that was huge. That, that program was yeah. big. Tell us about Alhaji and Alaji. Yes, sir. Uh, like I said, we don't show an indigenous way to his house. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, in the run up to the 2000 election, you know, the political temperature in the country had really gone up. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was incidentally the year we had the first transition. Mm -hmm. uh, so after the elections, His Excellency President Kufo won, became yeah. president. But the atmosphere became very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. You could see that the preponderance of the media at that time were more or less pro-government. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you, 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 you didn't have uh, many media houses striking the balance in such a manner that people would be comfortable to appear there and uh, express divergent views and opinions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, Alaji Batude be my friend, we sat down, we're discussing together with, uh, let me pay tribute to him, Alaji Tanko. Okay. He was also part of it. We mm. discussed and we said, look, why don't we find a way in which we can give alternative voice mm. to many of the voiceless, millions of voiceless people across the length and breadth of our country so that they can vent their uh, feelings on the way the country is being run. Mm. So That's we sat I mean. down, brainstormed, mm. and at the end, Elijah Baturim and myself yeah. decided to say, okay, we'll take up the program. Now, what name do we give to the program? We considered a lot of names. Mm. It was a whole debate. <laughs> yeah. so we debated it for two days. Mm. Then, uh, Alaji Baturi said, look, it is, the, the answer is here. It's very simple. You are Alaji A.B. if you say, I'm Alaji Baturi. Why would you say Alaji and Alaji? Yeah. So, so that is how <laughs> that started. Uh, the story came mm. on Alaji and Alaji. And uh, we first started at... Uh, uh, what's the name of this radio station? Uh, gold? gold? No, not Gold. Gold inherited it from... Uh, oh, they were in just uh, 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 after the, the cemetery, the Awudomi Cemetery here. Mm. Uh, I forgot this radio station's name. And so from there... It wasn't then, Groove? No, it wasn't Gold. Groove? Then we, groove, no. no. We, then we transited into... I remember in the course okay. of medicine. And then we, 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 we transited to, to Radio Gold. Mm. And then uh, from, since Radio Gold is still... Now, Radio Gold has uh, been shut down, yeah. and uh, yeah. it's now with uh, Pan-Africa TV. Mm. Mm. So, so now, um, in 2000, is President Kofo, so Radio Gold is pro-NDC, and now there is the NPP government. How difficult was it, you know, and also making sure that your voice was heard? So I'm sure you went really for the government. So how, how did you manage that? Yeah, um, the difficulty in this uh, part of the world is that, and I think that is something we need to work on. Mm. When political parties are in opposition, they cherish the pri principle of free speech. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they are champions, human rights advocates, and would go to the high heavens to champion why there should be plurality of the media. Mm. But when they get into power, mm. the attitude changes. So was it Vibe FM you were looking for? I think Vibe FM. Mm. Fantastic, okay. madam. God bless you. Amen. So you see, this, this is um, um, uh, the attitude that gave birth, like I said, to Alaji Alaji, where mm -hmm. alternative voices have to be found okay. to enable people to ventilate whatever views that they have. Mm. And so uh, I think that we as politicians have a bounding duty. Mm. Instead of contracting the, the, the realms of freedom of speech, mm. Instead of contracting the space for media plurality, we should be expanding. Yeah. And I think that there's so much space still there, out there, for us to ensure that uh, 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 we encourage the plurality of the media. And that's why I am vehemently opposed to the shutting down of radio stations. Yeah. I agree. There must have been some infractions, uh, 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 some of the radio stations and others engaging. Mm -hmm. But why? If you want to kill a, a mosquito, do you use a sledgehammer? No. <laughs> exactly. You don't. If, uh, madam, assuming without meeting, a mosquito settles on your cheek, and I want to, because our people say it is the mischief of the mosquito that enables the ordinary citizen to slap the chief. Yeah. You see, so oh. if, 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 if I want to kill a mosquito on your this, do I use a sledgehammer? If, if I use I, a sledgehammer, I, I I'm killing you and not the mosquito. Yes. Yeah. So yes. it's the same thing that those orga media organizations that are involved in media infractions, the intent of the the, 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 the uh, broadcast law that we, we formulated was not to kill them, mm -hmm. was to give them opportunity 
to be reformed. Mm. If there, there was an error, you give them the opportunity to make good the, the infraction that they have made. So they have not paid, they have not lived up to their financial obligations. You give them the opportunity. You don't yeah. shut them down. What do you make of journalists today? You know, uh, sensationalism, non-accuracy of information, just um, wanting to be the first to break news, yes. and so we yeah. do not double check and all that. How, what do you make of journalists today? See, one, one of the key points, and uh, let me be fair enough to say that uh, it's a problem that predated this per, 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 uh, current generation. Mm -hmm. uh, it started during our time, and I was an advocate of that, that we need to have a situation where people who are media practitioners do so as a calling. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not just because I don't have a job, then maybe let me see if I can hang on to this place mm -hmm. in, in, as a stopgap to something that I want to do yeah. later. Because, you see, if you are not motivated by the calling, the ethics of all the things that have been initiated in our GGA Code of Ethics and all mm -hmm. those things will become a, a, a mere decorative piece. Mm -hmm. So that if we are imbued by that uh, uh, calling and, 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 and we enter into media practice, we would endeavor to be professional. Mm -hmm. I have always said that it is not about the political uh, affiliation of anybody. Mm -hmm. You can be the general secretary of the MPP or the NDC and be a very professional journalist. Of course. Yeah. Okay, I, I, in the media practice, was associated with the NDC. Mm -hmm. But in my practice, for instance, in those days when the general secretary of the MPP was Dambotri, yeah. if he spoke to Dambotri, if Dambotri had any news to break, he would call me first. Because mm. mm. he was confident that, notwithstanding whatever they are, I was professional. When you sit on that job there, you have a bounding duty mm. to be professional. You have right. a bounding duty to be fair, mm. balanced. To, to, to all the uh, uh, constituents that, that, that you work for. Mm. And so from that standpoint, I'm sure that if all of us as journalists are minded by this, in some of the overly sensational things that we are talking about mm. could have been cured. Yeah. Because your professionalism will always remind you mm. that first mm. you have a duty to check and cross-check. Yeah. Of course. And then in 2012, you decided to proceed now to Parliament House. What informed that decision? Yeah, madam, before that... Um, in fact, some four years back, mm -hmm. uh, well, at Daily Graphic, there were about three busloads of people from my constituency. Mm -hmm. okay. That time it was Tamil enough. Mm -hmm. And so they had come, young men mm -hmm. had come from the constituency wanting me to come and contest for the, for the Tamil enough uh, mm -hmm. uh, primaries in the NDC. Wow. Well, how was the relationship with them like? And, yeah, like I said, I, any time I, I come home, I mingle with people. Mm. I'm a very free, easygoing person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is why they felt to like be the to, right person. I like to, to sit with people. I like mm. to sit, we chat, we do so many things. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, I'm sure the youth were very, very forthcoming. Came mm. there to encourage me. At that time, my senior... So they came from Tamale? Yes. All the way here. My senior brother was uh, the late uh, Honorable Abu Karisman. He was the member oh. of parliament mm. for that area. Okay. So when they came, I said, look, yeah, but... We are from the same area. You know, in our tradition, you don't jump over the landlord's feet mm -hmm. to patronize his bedroom. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so right. you know that the, 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 my senior brother is there, and I cannot yeah. jump over him to yeah. contest him. The right thing must be done. So we should wait. They were very disappointed. In fact, there were some who held insults at me and called me a, 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 a bloody coward mm. and that I didn't want to face uh, some tough competition for me. Mm. But I said that everything in this world has its time. Yeah. So we should beat the time. Mm. Fortunately, by the grace of Allah Almighty, in 2012, Sanaru Consensi was created mm -hmm. out of part of Tamale North Center and a bit of SAF. And so uh, they say that if you have been going around and parasiting food and they call for free <laughs> food, it's like your wife has cooked. <laughs> so uh, when Sanaru came, yeah. uh, by the grace of Allah, it was a dandy. Yeah, I felt dandy. like it was yours. Yeah. You so know? Uh, mm -hmm. this time, what the youth had been yearning yeah. for, yeah, we're there together. It. You know, so, a little, a little uh, bit of whispering. Yeah. August 2012, um, mm. we went for the primaries. Yeah. By the grace of Allah, won. And that is how I transited mm. from media practice to po politics. Wow. Well, the uh, members of parliament um, talk about constituents coming in, mm. some with their problems. Mm. You know, you have to be paying school fees, giving chop money. You, know you are an opposition member of parliament. How difficult is this for you now? Uh, you know, our people say that the hyena doesn't know the price of a goat. Mm. You really catch and chop. They yeah. don't care. They know there's a value that is on the good. So yeah. it is not only just about whether you are in opposition or but they see you as a principal instrument 
for resolving their issues. Yeah. I can tell you without any item of say that even in opposition, I am constructing roads. Mm. I'm doing electricity. Mm. Just getting pools and wells and others to go and steal well villages, mm -hmm. extending water supply, yeah. mm. building uh, public places of convenience, and so many other things that you associate with government. Yeah. Mm. So um, a lot of it, like I said, comes from also, I will call it a calling, mm. uh, the, how you feel about your people. Mm. Okay. I went into politics principally to make a difference in the lives of my people. Okay. okay. And are you proud of yourself with what I can you say achieved? without any idea of station that by the grace of Allah in my eighth year, I can say without any idea. And the people confirm. Mm. Mm. There are many places they tell you, uh, MP, unless until you tell us that you will no longer contest, yeah. we shall be with you all the way. Wow. So 2020 so, is around the corner. I've contested three primaries. I've won all. Mm. Won all so, and, and by the grace of Allah, um, in the parliamentary election and the presidential election, in my constituency, no other party has won one police station in my constituency before. Wow. When Sanaru was created in 2012. Mm. Wow. So by the grace of Allah, it is by dint mainly of the hard work we've done. Mm. We became MP. There were many towns and villages that had no light. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they all have lights today. Within two years, by the grace of Allah, the whole place was. Yeah. And, and uh, to quote somebody, yeah. electrified. <laughs> you know, two years ago. Water. I, yeah. mm -hmm. Our mothers used to carry. Uh, this uh, buckets. the buckets, uh, the big, uh, the I don't pants. know what to call it, the, the bucket, those cans, yeah. Yeah. big bases, yeah. and walk miles mm. to go and fetch even water that even they give it to you, you may not want to drink. Mm. Today, by the grace of uh, the hard work we had done, mm. today they drink pipe bone water in their homes. Oh. Wow, that's that's nice. Villages where there was no light for them to even uh, mm. uh, get their children to study. By the grace of Allah, today they are teaching computer literacy mm. in villages in my mm. constituency. Because yeah. wow. apart from getting them light, they are building schools and getting them light. We have supplied computers. Interesting. Wow. And they are teaching them computer literacy. So yeah. 2020, yeah. how is it looking? So by the grace of Allah Almighty, um, say that if it will rain, you see it in the sky. Absolutely. Yeah. The class will tell you. Mm. Yeah. See, so um, I have no doubt. A house that has fallen, you don't ask whether the roof is still standing. <laughs> I'm sure today, um, the two political parties yeah. have records. Mm -hmm. The NDC has a record. The MPP has a record. Mm. His Excellency President Nana mm. has a record. President Mama has a record. Yeah. yeah. And so today you are beginning to see that uh, one manifesto, which is a people's manifesto, mm -hmm. and the other, which is uh, I don't know how to call that one a manifesto. <laughs> Now, you won't know. It's an understanding that you don't know. No, I, I'm sure I'm just looking at the mm. qualitative difference. Today yeah. we are all discussing one manifesto seems to be predominant. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll leave that to you to, to determine which has been predominant. All right. Well, I wouldn't know. So which has been predominant? <laughs> you know, which has been discussed more? <laughs> but, 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 you know, um, we always talk about mm. politics of insults, um, attacking people's personalities and all that. Now that we have both manifestos that um, we can be debating on issues, yes. what do you say to... Your followers, because most yeah. of the times you at the top are friends, you are, you know, being civil, Shake hands and but everything. those who are following you are fighting, insulting and all that. What do you say to these people? Yeah, you see, I've always said that. You see, when a cow is chewing grass, the calf watches his mother's mouth mm -hmm. so that it can perfect the art of chewing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and so I have always said that those of us who are entrusted with leadership mm -hmm. must set good example. Mm -hmm. You see, it is only a man who cannot stand rational argument, who converts argument into a fight. Mm. If, if you know that you have a very good case to make, why resort to insults? Mm -hmm. yeah. Because the politics of insults obscures the, 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 the merit that should come out from rational argument. Mm. So if you have a rational and convincing argument to make, <laughs> why insult? Mm. Yeah. I can make my point without, being, without yeah. sounding insulting. Yeah. So I have never ascribed to the uh, politics of insult. And I've always said that when you see politics of insult taking place, I mean, people have, uh, like this program, you that they are walking the logic on upside down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it is, it is important for us mm. to imbibe and practice the politics of decency, mm. decorum. Mm. We must have respect for one another, even yeah. in our divergence. Divergence shouldn't necessarily be hostile. Yeah. Mm. yeah you, 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 can, you can have a convergence of... Uh, Certain larger interests. We have yeah. a collective interest to make this country peaceful. Of yes. course. All of us want that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So whether you are MPP, you are NDC, you are CPP, you are UGM, whatever political party, yeah. mm -hmm. there's a convergence of mm. interests 
on that line. Mm. But beyond, beyond politics, how do you unwind? I mean, in your leisure time, what do you do? Uh, a lot of the time, I like reading. I read. Mm. Okay. Uh, and then uh, I also like watching documentaries. Okay. 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 And above all, I like arguments. <laughs> <laughs> on right, that on, note, yeah, we will not on, continue. Yes, I think before Honorable leaves us, you should just give us your favorite proverb. Oh, um, you see, the, the, the proverb is to illustrate a certain situation in which you are, mm. or certain situations you want to express mm -hmm. certain positions on. Okay. So, um, so, your current position the, is. The, there cannot be uh, uh, a situation where you are selling share butter and your feet to be white. Mm hmm. Mm. Or, like you said, you are living by the banks of a river and washing your hands with spittle. Yeah. It, is, it is a situation of what comes up that you use to illustrate a particular point yeah. that you make it. Okay, so we are closing. <laughs> yeah, so I, I'll just say that even no matter how hot the sun is, mm -hmm. it will set. Absolutely. <laughs> so the sun has set. Honorable ABA Fuseni Alhaji, thank you very much for coming. And we wish you all the best yeah. in the elections. And let me thank you very much, uh, City FM, uh, City uh, TV, City, TV not just TVV, your establishment mm. as, uh, how do I call it? Uh, as a media. There, there yes. is a media name. Omni Media. Omni Media. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I, I want to, not because I'm here, but I want to say that there's a lot of uh, uh, brilliant and talented material here. Mm. Okay, thank you very uh, much. I'm speaking to you. I have a high appreciation for the likes of Bernard Avler. There are a number of your, your people here. Thank you. Uh, Umaru Sanda. Yeah. There are many, many very um, competent journalists here that I have a lot of respect for. Thank you. We are hoping to uh, broaden the horizons of uh, media freedom mm. and, and, and confer this uh, credibility on our media landscape. Yeah. I think that that is what we need today to keep it going. So that uh, at the end of the day, when they are counting what things, they will remove fire first. Absolutely. Yeah. We are humble. Thank you very much, Alaji. <laughs> so thank you very much. This has been our guest, the Honorable um, ABA A Fuseni. Yeah. He's a member of parliament for Nar San Narigu. Why do I always keep saying Narigu? San Narigu. Okay. He's the MP for San Narigu. There are some yes. who uh, massacred the name. <laughs> <laughs> so we try to get it correctly. Thank you. You've done well. All right. Thank you very <laughs> much. This has been Upside Down. We'll see you next week. <laughs>